Hi, Sandy. Hello, Tony. How are you? The last time I saw you, Tony Hadley, I don't remember when it was in the 80s. It was probably about 86 or 7 when you guys were here in Melbourne and I was doing a documentary on you for BBC or ITN and you stayed at the Hilton in East Melbourne and I hung around with you and, and came to all your concerts and did all of that. I think I was with you for about a week. We were both a lot younger then. That's a long time ago. <laughs> I know. You know what? I think, it was, I think it was actually earlier. I think it was uh, 84, 85, the parade yeah, okay. tour. Could, could well so, have been. That's right. So uh, I, was, I was a 10 to 24, 25 then. <laughs> it's, where does the time go? Oh, it's gone so fast, hasn't it? It's just crazy. Oh, I can't it believe did. it. Yeah, it is crazy. But the thing is, I still feel like a kid in a sweet shop. So, well, do you remember your parents used to say to, to tell that to you all the time? You know, oh, you know, yeah. one day you'll you'll feel the same. You still feel young inside, and you go, "Oh, you old fogey, forget it. That's ridiculous." Yeah, it's only when you look in the mirror that you realise that that time is going by, or when you try and do you're, a physical you're activity. Pretty, you're looking pretty good, I've got to oh, say. I've, I've got sixty-five coming up in a couple of weeks, and I'm, it's like a it's really affecting. <laughs> well, you look really, I gotta say, you look really, I wouldn't have said you were that. You look really good. Thank you. That's very kind. It's, um, very so, what, kind. what time is it in, in, in Oz? Uh, I've got five o'clock in the afternoon on, on Wednesday. I like the fact that you're doing morning interviews. That's terrific. Yeah. That's awesome. no, well, I have to be up anyway for the school run for um, oh. our youngest, our two, our two youngest. So, how old are they? So, um, well, I mean, if you, if you look at the top spread, I mean, I've got 38, 36, 31, 15, and 10. Wow. wow. So, uh, yeah, you're doing well. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, still, I'm still doing school runs at 62. Yeah, well, no, not the school. I, I get it. I absolutely get it. I've just had my granddaughter here all afternoon. It's totally exhausting. Yeah, I haven't got that yet. No, got that. Won't be too long with your older kids. Uh, my son's got no intention of settling down at the moment. Half his ah. mates are married and half of them are confirmed bachelors. They all have got good jobs. They earn good money. They go on nice holidays and they don't fancy being tied down by a, a lady. <laughs> it's kind of, yeah. Interesting. Oh, okay. Well, peer pressure oh, will get him sooner or later, I'm sure. Depends my daughter, what, what one I think my daughter's, she's going to be the one, Tony. She, she's, yeah. um, she's all in love and I think, oh, please God. Things are going the right way, yeah. Ah, fingers crossed. Um, talking about Tony, I was reading about you that uh, one of the songs, one of your solo songs, you actually wrote uh, and dedicated to her. Uh, looking for it okay. now, I can't, I can't uh, find the name, but you'll tell me. It's called She. It's called She, and um, yeah, wrote it years and years ago, and just um, yeah, it's a really nice song actually. I'm not, I, I'm not terribly nostalgic so I'm not one of these people that go back and go wow weren't you great kind of thing I never listened to Spandau stuff I never watched the videos I never watch or listen to TH stuff I'm one of these people that as soon as the mix is, is done I kind of listen to it to check that it's okay and everything and make any corrections and then I'm moving on to the next project so um but no it's a lovely song and on the new album we've got a little song um it, which it's, it's called Genevieve which is my youngest daughter and uh, and it's good. It's just it just the the name works really well, sort of to sing. And it's all about your kids growing up and stuff and leaving home. And it's, it's, it was a really heartfelt song. Yeah, amazing. So, and and aren't the boys jealous that you haven't written about them? Nah, they're boys. They're okay. They'll get over it. <laughs> <laughs> so is it is it two girls and two boys, or or three girls and two boys? Three girls, two boys. Yeah. So three girls, we, two. We can expect another song um, for the third daughter because you'd have to even that out, huh? I've got to even that one up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, okay, good thinking. I'll think about that one. <laughs> so, so you you um you coming back to Australia? We're very excited to have you back again. You have a bit of a love affair with this country, don't you? And and well, it, with you. Well, to be honest with you, it was one of the first countries when when Spandau released to cut a long story short in 1980. It was one of the first countries that actually embraced Spandau. There was a couple of European countries, uh, but we were more of a cult band. And although we had a top five hit in the UK, we weren't seen as, a, I don't think, as a mainstream band, not in 1980. But Australia 
sort of took us under our wing. And then when we got there for the first time in 84, 85, and my son Tom, who's now six foot six and 38, took his first steps at the Siebel townhouse down in, in Sydney. Uh, what a great hotel and that so was. There's a connection there. And um, and just the Australian audiences are kind of crazy. They they enjoy themselves. And um, and we always have a great time. I mean, I've always said that if Australia was six hours away, everyone would want to go and live there. So. Yeah, absolutely. There's, uh, there's some good things about being so far away and obviously a whole lot of not such good things. Um, yeah. You, you um you launched your solo career after Spandau split in 1990. Why did the band give it up at that point? It was the band was getting more and more sort of fractious, really. The last album um, called Heart Like a Sky, uh, terrible title. But anyway, and I remember saying at the time, I think, look, guys, um, there were lots of personal issues going on within in in the band relationships and stuff outside, you know, girlfriends and things like that. And, and then Martin and Gary were sort of getting involved in their, the, the film thing, The Craze. Um, the, the spirit of the band, I didn't feel, was, was still there. And I said, look, guys, I, I really think that we should, we should sort of go away, like as we used to, to a residential studio in France or America or wherever. And, you know, a few beers, get that camaraderie back together. And, and um, anyway, so... I, I was kind of overruled and we ended up doing it in London. It took so long to make and it cost a fortune. And unfortunately, it, it, it's, it's not a great, I don't think it's a great album. It wasn't constructed in the same way. And we sort of got to the point where I, I just, I kind of remember saying, oh, this is just not working anymore. And we just drifted apart, really. Yeah, I mean... The chemistry between band members is crucial, isn't it? I mean, all those fabulous hits that you had in the years leading up to that, yeah. when everybody was getting on so well, really shows in the music, doesn't it? No, I think I think it does. I mean, I've always said that if you're not happy in yourself, uh, that ref that's really re reflects in the music. I, I mean, when we came to Australia on the parade tour, we were riding the crest of a wave. We just had a really successful European tour. We were you know, five young lads in Australia at 24, 25 years of age. You know, not many people traveled in those days and certainly not to Australia. So there we were having the time of our lives, did some fantastic shows. It was mad, it was like Beatlemania. I mean, we couldn't even was, leave the hotel. It was absolutely, I would, that's exactly what I was gonna say. There were girls yeah. clinging on to the cyclone fences and trying to climb over and screaming at the top of their lungs. Yeah. I had first experience <coughs> of that. Yeah, it, it was like Beatlemania. It, I mean, it really was. I mean, you know, to, to leave in a hotel, there'd be 300 screaming girls outside of pretty much all the time. And then you took a look over the balcony, give them a wave, and then all, a couple of them are faint and stuff. Funny enough, <laughs> I've just been to see Harry, Harry Styles, because uh, my <laughs> Zara is, is a mad Harry Styles fan. And, um, and I don't met him. He's a nice guy. I met the 1D guys, and they're really nice chaps. And... Um, so we took her to Wembley with my, my little one, my little Genevieve and my wife. The little one wasn't remotely interested, the 10 year old Harry Styles, but all the girls there were screaming. The volume of the screams was unbelievable. And I mean, he, he just did two sellout nights at Wembley Stadium. Incredible. Yeah. But it was a great concert, really. Yeah. I mean, I really enjoyed I've it. I've heard that. I've heard that. Yeah, yeah. Great, great songs. And, uh, you know, he's a great entertainer. He's very, very good. Yeah. Yeah, so, well, um, you you guys were pretty good at that too. You put on a hell of a show. From those early days, which was the song that you were most fond of? Well, one that I still play, well, I play all, all the hits today, really, plus my own stuff. Uh, I, to cut a long story short, I mean, if we're looking at the middle period after the parade tour, then it would be Through the Barricades. For me, is, is I think that's the most consummate song that we ever did. Um, it's just got something about it lyrically and everything else. Um, and, and it's just really anthemic. So Through the Barricades would be the, my favourite favourite, but still love playing to cut a long story short, and that even now still gets the crowds going. What's kind of weird is that the generation that followed us um, earlier on have now grown up, now had children, and uh, basically made their kids sit down and listen to Spandown <laughs> Duran and whatever else. And so we get a lot of younger kids coming along now. And it's amazing. I mean, they're singing the words, 
And even the new songs that we do uh, from my new album, they, they, they know the words to that too. I mean, people seem really good at learning words these days. I'm terrible still. <laughs> Uh, no, I, I think that they always were. I mean, I, I still know the words to songs from the 60s that, that I haven't heard for yeah. 50 years. And somehow when it comes on, you just know all of the words. It's an yeah, incredible it's phenomenon. Of, it's kind of weird, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I know what you mean. Yeah. I wish someone so, could explain um, that to me one day. It'd be interesting to find out what, what that is about the human brain. But uh, no, words, when they're set to music, we get them somehow. And, and yours were always set beautifully to music. You, you had a bit yeah. of trouble um, in, in 1999 when you tried to sue Gary Kemp um, for the rights to um, some of those words, didn't you? Well, what it was, it, very briefly, without going back to me too much in the past, very briefly, we had what I thought was a, it was a gentleman's agreement to share in the publishing, which went on for many, many years. And then it all of a sudden stopped. Uh, no one actually informed me that it stopped. And I tried to resolve the situation. Um, no one would talk to me. No one wanted to resolve it. And um, so I felt that we had no option but to, to go to court. Bit. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, one thing I do always advise young bands and young artists is that get independent legal advice because I never in a million years, given that we were at school mm. together and everything else, mm. thought that we were sort of... Uh, Oh, that's someone at the front door, by the way. Oh, my dog bowl just went too. That's interesting. I never thought in a million years that we would ever end up in court. And actually, I never thought we would end up with the acrimony that, that's, that, that exists today. Um, unfortunately, it's just one of those things. So I always advise young people to get independent legal advice. And if we'd done that from the beginning, then everything would have been sewn up in a legal document. And that would have been fine. But unfortunately, we did it on a gentleman's agreement and that was rescinded. But there you go. Yeah. Uh, we lost the case. You take it on the chin and you move forward. And um, this is and the you, way it goes. Yeah. And you did move forward. I mean, despite that, you came back to the band in 2009 and hung in there until pretty recently, to, until 2017. What made you come back? Well, we had after 2009, 2010, uh, we, we did the tour. To be honest, the person that kicked it off, do you know Shane Ritchie? Huh. He's, a, he's a performer, he's a comedian, singer, he's a great friend of mine. And he was doing a radio show and he's a mad Spandau fan. And he said to me, he said, hey, Tony, he said, come on, come on, when are you going to get the band back together again? I said, oh, no, no, no. And he kept going on and on. It, it was a sort of running joke. And uh, in the end, I said, oh, OK, we'll get the band back. Oh, come on, let's get the band back together again. So I just said it as a joke. And all of a sudden it ended up on the news and, <laughs> and all the fans were going, wow, the band's going to get back. So we, after much deliberation, after six months of sort of thinking, can I do this? Um, we finally sort of got together and we decided that we would try and make it work and rekindle some of the friendship. And, and it was it was a, it was never going to be the same. It's it's a bit like you know if your wife goes off and has an affair, it's it's never quite the same. But um, but it was good and it was successful. We then had a break for another three or four years, and then 2014, 2015, we did the Soul Boys of the Western World tour uh -huh. with the with a documentary, which was a uh, George Henkin was the director, and she did yeah, a brilliant, brilliant. yeah yeah. So it was a walks and all documentary, difficult watch, I have to say. Um, I toured and promoted the film with the guys for about a year and a half, and then I had to go off and do my own stuff. And um, I'm not sure they liked that very much, but, um, you know, my, my, well, my commitment, I think what people realise, don't, don't realise, is that I've been a solo artist for longer than I was ever in Spano Ballet for, so, um, which is just the way it goes. So... Um, Anyway, that was that, and then all of a sudden, legal issues started again, and I won't no. go into that. No. Um, and it got to the point where I just I, my position was just totally, totally untenable, and I resigned, um, not through any fault of my own, I have to say. But um, I often say that I wish the guys would have been a bit disingenuous with the um, with the truth when they've been on TV shows as to why I left. They know why I left. It was a specific reason. So it's very sad for the fans, very sad for me, because I think we would have definitely have celebrated a 40th anniversary. Um, as it happens, you're stuck with me and I'm celebrating my 40th anniversary. <laughs> well, we're very happy to be stuck with you. And, uh, and it's you. your voice that is Spandau Ballet. 
Spandau Ballet could not be Spandau Ballet without you. And your voice is so magnificent. You've taken it off into solo pursuits. Is it still as good today as it was 40 years ago? Yeah. I mean, I've done, I've just done 36 dates, <laughs> which is a lot of shows, a lot of back-to-backs. I mean, three on one off, four on one off. Yeah, I mean, I, we've got a fabulous crew, um, uh, amazing crew, our sound guys. They they save me every night by giving me the best sound on the planet. And, you know, because when you're a singer, you need, you, you you really do need to hear yourself above the wail of the band, you know. And, um, and, and the band and the crew, they're all brilliant. We're all great friends and stuff. So 36 Dates, the voices, I, I think I could do stuff now that I couldn't do when I was younger. So I've, I've got a bit, I've got more depth to my voice, but I can also sing higher than I could oh, wow. when I was young. And you were always um, known for that incredible range anyway. So you're saying it's even extended further. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, we, we did a festival last week and, um, and we did a cheeky version of Radio Gaga and, <laughs> um, which is, you know, Freddie's got a lovely man, Freddie, amazing voice. And, um, and we, I sing it in the original key of, of Freddie and stuff with no worries mm. at all. Wow. And I don't think I've done that when I was younger. So, so it's kind of cool. But even, I mean, the new record that hopefully we're going to release in Australia because of you is, is no, um, no sh- shrinking violet when it comes to vocals. It's quite sort of high sort of song. And, um, but no, I'm lucky. Uh, I'm very, very lucky, yeah. Well, I think you're very talented. It, is because of you the single out already? Or that's still to come? Well, it's out. It's 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 on Spotify and everything else. We had uh, It went down really well in the UK. We were playlisted at BBC Radio 2. Massive regional play. The thing is, it, it, it doesn't work like it used to. I mean, when you used to release a single years ago, you'd then go and promote it in this country. There were record companies that promoted it for you. It doesn't, it, it's changed so much. So it's really just an online thing. But um, uh, ho- hopefully we'll get to Australian radio in the next few weeks. Awesome. And have you managed to adapt with those times with the changing industry as it, as it is and kind of keep um, abreast of it all? If I'm honest, I hate it. <laughs> I'll be really, not the only I one. Mean, do I like social media? No, not, not just from a personal point of view. I, I actually think it's a really dangerous thing. I mean... I was just talking to my brother yesterday and he said someone he knows making really barbed comments about his wife uh, for no reason at all. And it's like, and he said to me, he said, why do people feel they can say that on social media and the whole bullying aspect, especially young young girls and guys? I I think it's very, very dangerous. Um, And I'm hoping, I don't think it will happen, but I'm hoping that more and more people will maybe switch off as they get older, because um, I mean, it always, you know, you read in the papers, these, these, these people say, I've been trolled and they've been really nasty. Like, well, don't look at it, switch yeah. it off. Yeah, it um, is addictive. And, and it's yeah, a way of keeping up with what's happening for sure. Unfortunately, there are more people getting their news from social media than any um, traditional news outlet. Uh, yeah. I don't know what that says about the world. I, mean, I, I, think, I think also that my concern is, is I mean, you know, I'm lucky enough, I've got my own record company, we release our own records, uh, the, the album will be out next spring, it's going to be brilliant, I'm, I'm very excited, but uh, for young artists, I mean, I met someone the other day, their son had signed like a two single deal with one of the major record companies, it doesn't mean anything these days, mm-hmm. because if you don't crack it on the first one, it's you know that's it you drop there's no sense of commitment and longevity and if you look at Spandau as an example we would never have got in the present day never have got to the true album so think about how many wonderful pieces of music that would have been out there in the public domain but the record companies don't it's, it's, don't support it don't yeah mm-hmm. it's a big problem big problem yeah, absolutely. So you, the the stuff that you're doing in performance these days is really diverse, isn't it? You you go from one extreme to the other. It is, yeah. I mean, what we've done, what the show that we're going to bring to Australia is pretty much the anniversary show because that's what we're celebrating. So it will be, um, it, it's it's going to be what music influenced me. Obviously, all the Spandau classics, True, Gold, Barricades, only when you leave around around half life here everything that everybody wants because it is a, a 40th anniversary. But we're throwing in a sort of, you know, first song I ever performed at the rehearsal rooms when I was at school, you know, punk band that influenced me, bit of Sinatra in there, 
a uh, couple of new tunes as well. So it's it's a st- I sort of kind of monologues quite a bit of it as well. That's so great. sort of quite in between. The show is about two hours, so wow. we might trim it down a little bit. But everyone said the best show they've seen. Uh, they loved every minute of it because, you know, I was getting involved with the audience and and, and the songs were quite diverse, you and know, apart still, from the obvious fan yeah. ones. And you're still as passionate about performing and making music as you always were? Yeah, I mean, I think the minute you, you're not is the minute you should give up. I mean, I hear, sometimes you hear artists and they're like, oh, I don't like this anymore, it's so boring. And then, you know, come on, you've got the best job in the world. Uh, I, you know, I, I think I've got the best job in the world. I've got the fabulous TH band, I've got a fabulous crew, uh, management, family, you know, making music, going on stage, I'm still doing it. I mean, I, you know, I have to pinch myself, I'm 62, and I'm still doing it and still loving it. Making records, going on television, I uh, just did a thing for the one show recently, a couple of weeks ago. So I'm still, I still love it. Um, the minute I stop loving it is the minute I'm going to give up. But I'm not very good at gardening, so maybe I won't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Tony, can't wait to see you here. I've oh, heard that you. it's a fabulous show and uh, you, you, uh, you're you doing yourself proud wherever you're taking it. We can't wait uh, in Australia to see you bringing it here. Um, what about the other guys? Are they are they a bit uh, pissed off, peeved off that, that uh, you're doing the 40th anniversary tour and they're not? Um, you know, I don't know. I mean, I, the only one I see from the band, who, funny enough, came to, to a show down on the South Coast is Steve Norman. Um, his his mum and my mum were best friends and he sadly lost his mum. We had a very frank discussion and I think he realises, he now realises where it's all gone wrong. <laughs> so mm-hmm. there you go. But no, so Steve, Steve and me, we chat every now and again. Apart from that, I've not seen uh, Martin, Gary or John for seven years now. Well, that's and pretty sad. It is really, really sad. But as I said, they that's went life. on a course of that. Yeah. That was, you know, put it this way. If you wanted to get rid of your lead singer, you went about it the right way. So, and they tried another new a new lead singer. And I actually knew him partly through my, a couple of my band guys. And I just sent him a text saying, watch you back, good luck. And... Um, and I believe he got sacked on live TV. So uh, there you go. Great. Good you got out. Good you're doing your solo thing and it's so successful. What's the... Uh... I'm sorry, oh. I, I just, I think it's the most important thing is being happy. I mean, I have a great laugh with my guys, the Fab, Fab TH band. You know, there's never any angst, you know, but we consult, we write together. We've got a couple of cracking songs on the new album. And I think that's the most important thing about is being happy. And it's, um, I, I don't want the angst. Music's there to be fun. I just want to enjoy it. Yeah. What does your family think of you going all, all guns blazing and then all this work? Are they happy with it too? Um, yeah, they're, they're kind of cool with it. I mean, you know, the, the, the little ones find it difficult, I think, we a bit away because when we go on to the Australia, New Zealand tour, we're, we're not only on Australia, New Zealand, but we're then off to Japan southeast asia so we're away for kind of five weeks but compared to the time i was away with span i mean i'd be away for sometimes three three and a half months mm. and um that that was difficult on um on the kids and, and your partner and everything it's it, it's not an easy job to be married to if i'm honest musicians are pretty selfish because we're so consumed with music we're always thinking music 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 and then then you have to do the washing up <laughs> I'll do the hoovering. <laughs> at least you at least you've had two and a half years at home with the pandemic. It, it played its part. Oh, flipping hell, that was difficult. That was, I mean, it was brilliant being at home and stuff, but not singing. I mean, I was but singing on the phone. I, I do stuff for various people and um just to keep my voice in trim. Um, but that was tough. That was yeah. really tough. Yeah. Yeah, tough for everyone. Good. It's good we're coming out of that long dark tunnel now and that you're heading this way. Look how how is it in Australia now? Everything back to normal? Uh yeah, it is pretty much back to normal, but I think the numbers are higher than ever. Um oh, really? but no, but yeah, but no one's talking about it. All the mask rules and everything have, have gone. That they're encouraging people to get back to work. We're in the middle of a flu season. So uh, the flu, you know, if you didn't, or if you did get COVID, you 
certainly got the flu as well. The flu is worse than having COVID. Um, right. So I think you'll you'll end up with that next season. Um, yeah, it's a strange old time that the world's going through. It's like everyone's sick. But um, it's, just, it's just crazy. I mean, not only COVID and then, I mean, you know, you guys are a long way away from it. So, so are we, I suppose. But this whole business with Russia and Ukraine. Um, and the grain just, and everything. Like, everything in the world is just completely fucked. And we've never seen it like this in our lifetimes. It's hard to fathom. Yeah. It's just, you know, I've just, funny enough, I just released a, a record for, um, um, uh, it's, it's, a, it's all Come Home to Peace, uh, which you can get on Spotify. And it's, it's a record to sort of remember the troops coming back from the Falklands, which is now 40, Falklands War, which is 40 years. And, um, and I, you know, I say in interviews, we never learn. I never thought we'd have a war with the Argentinians. Why? They're really nice, you know. <laughs> you know, why the Rus and also Russia and Ukraine at some point will have to form a detente. They will have to get together, as we have done with all the, our warring partners over the years and the sure. IRA and else you know you will eventually have to come to a position of of some sort of friendship that's right and, and how many lives will be lost in the meantime oh it's just tragic it's just tra my, my friend's looking after uh, a couple of ukrainian he's got sort of separate uh -huh. addicts and he's got a uh, looking after and they're absolutely lovely absolutely lovely i, I think they're going to go back to keith just um, in the next few weeks because keith's now quite reasonably safe so, so. yeah 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 oh that's very Error. nice of him to take them in awful state of affairs tony hadley i won't hold you up anymore i really appreciate your time it's great to <laughs> chat you with you much. and i'm super excited to see you back down under again yeah come along have a glass of wine you i are. think we got coming along with loads of wine on the tour which is great <laughs> he's awesome. got he's got his own vineyard <laughs> i'll be there that sounds great <laughs> that's right travel safely and, uh, yeah, and thanks, well. Looking thanks. forward to coming over. It's thanks be a million. Fun. We'll Great see you fun. soon. Thanks so much for Take talking care. to me today. Thank you. Bye, Tony. Take care. Bye. Cheers. Bye. Bye.